Well, if we said, if there was a law that said every civil servant involved in this and everybody who makes a decision, if there was a single death from microwave radiation, we would have you in court and we would try you. And if you're guilty for manslaughter, you would go to jail. I'm sure they would change their minds, but they won't. <clears throat> they are immune. They can get away with it. They're only in for however long. And my impression, and I may be biased and angry and old and stupid, but my impression is that the leaders, they like to go around the world, shake hands, convince the world that they are making treaty after treaty after treaty, not one of which has succeeded, but they, they take all the accolades and they come back uh, and, and they pass on the problem to the next person. Uh, and I think that is the problem with the government, is that they will not be accountable, that they are, they are immune from this. Thank you. Um, I read recently that, that, that the honeybee in West Sussex in England is on the verge of extinction. What implication does it have for the rest of the, for the, rest of the environment should the honeybee become extinct? It, it, it varies country to country. If you take a country like Africa that I was in earlier this year, they have lost whole fields and their fields can be the size of one of our counties. They have lost whole fields of honeybees. Now the honeybee tends to pollinate vitamin C producing plants. So in countries like Africa that relies on its own produce to eat, they are going to lack vitamin C, which means they now run the risk of scurvy, which means they have to start importing vitamin C. Globally, if we were to lose all of our pollinating insects, it has been estimated that if the, and this was published in Nature, if the total world's ecosystems break down, the cost would be about 33,000 billion United States dollars a year on the price of food. So what would happen is food would become so expensive that the poor wouldn't be able to afford it. And in our country, what it actually means, if we lose the bee, and if we lose the bee, we also lose the other pollinating insects, because what affects one insect actually affects all of the others right down to ants. <clears throat> um, if we lose them, we have to start importing food. Now, if I can give you an analogy uh, of how this would affect a country globally, and I know this to be correct, we're in Germany. So let's say that for Germany, we look at the situation for Germany from the telecommunications industry's effect. <clears throat> let's say there are 60 million cell phones in Germany. And let's say the average bill is one euro a day. Germany is now losing 60 million euros every single day to the four main telecommunication industries. So 60 million is going out every day and that's not coming back. Now you have the medical bills of the people, which is between 3 and 15%. The medical bills of the people who are sick, that cannot work. Now you have Germany's share of 33 trillion United States dollars at its extreme 
end. So if you start looking at the price of food is going to rocket, the price of health care is going to rocket, and you've got this money flowing out, any child in, in the bottom primary school maths class, if you say, here is your money box, this is what is coming in, this is what is going out, this is what is going out, and this is what is going out, any child will say, my money box, sooner or later, is going to be empty. And this is going to happen to Germany and any country in the world, and I don't care which country it is, at the rate you are losing money to the industry, at the rates that you are going to start importing food, the rate you are going to have your healthcare costs, which means importing more drugs, so the pharmaceutical industry are going to benefit on an enormous scale with the communications industry here. Any country, depending over how much time, has to go bankrupt. Any country, and I don't care who they are. And the added effect <clears throat> is the carbon footprint from all of this. <clears throat> it was shown that uh, a couple of years ago, some scientists, and there were three papers published on this, and they all came up roughly with the same result. A couple of years ago, it was shown that the carbon released into the atmosphere needed to power all of the cell phones, all of the transmitters, all of the Wi-Fi, everything, comes to about 110 0.7 million tonnes of carbon dioxide a year. It's the equivalent of 29 million cars every year going onto the roads. And <clears throat> what that makes now, especially with Wi-Fi going everywhere, they're trying to Wi-Fi entire cities, what this means is that the telecommunications industry produces more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere than the aviation industry. It is the biggest polluter of the planet in terms of carbon dioxide, and not a single word has been said against the tele telecommunications industry. We hear lots about not building more airports, not building more runways. In the United Kingdom, our government has said they're going to put seven pence or eight pence on each gallon of petrol to cut down the amount drivers are driving, to cut down the, the carbon footprint. But not a single word has been published by any government anywhere in the world against the telecommunications industry. And the result of all of this carbon dioxide, <clears throat> and this has been published in Scientific American this year, and it's not just from this industry, it is all the industries. Carbon dioxide, uh, you're a doctor, you will know this, uh, carbon dioxide and water together produce carbonic acid. So the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere sinking onto the oceans and the seas, they have actually changed. They're not changing, they have changed the acidity of the oceans and the seas. And the microbes and the fish in the seas have a very, very low tolerance for the alkalinity and acidity of water. <clears throat> and what we are now doing is we are physically destroying all of the living species in our oceans and our seas and the telecommunications industry is the major polluter now and not a single person is doing anything about it to stop them. In fact, they're doing 
as much as they can to encourage them to make it worse. In London, the mayor has boasted that he is going to turn the whole of the city into a Wi-Fi zone for the 2012 Olympics. Now, other cities are also trying to be Wi-Fi. We're trying to get every single school, it seems, in the Western world, Wi-Fi. And all this can do is, is exacerbate the problem we have with the environment, the problem we have with the oceans, and the bottom line, and we have the proof, we have absolute indisputable proof, and it goes back to 1971, which is when we, we had it, and everything since has confirmed it. We had it, and what we are doing is... We are physically destroying not just our children's health by illness and genetic illness. We are destroying the health of the planet. We are destroying every living being from the largest mammal in the oceans to the smallest slime mold in the soil. We are destroying Slowly, well, not even slowly now, we are destroying everything uh, because this industry is not being controlled by governments. And that is the problem. That has such far-reaching and massive implications. You're saying it's not just brain tumours, it's not just leukaemias. <coughs> We're talking about total collapse Absolutely. of our environment. All the ecological systems collapsing? Absolutely. I mean, We're talking worse than nuclear war. Absolutely. Oh, much worse than nuclear war. Um, absolutely. Uh, and as a doctor, you will know this, that um, when you look at human cells, animal cells, plant cells, even bacteria cells, when you look and you go down to the genetic structure and look at what the genetic structure is made of, there is absolutely no difference, no difference at all, between the, uh, at the atomic and nuclear level, there is no difference between what we are all made of. Every living thing in the oceans, uh, on land, every living thing is made of exactly the same small particles. So if you are damaging humans, and we had all the government proof we wanted in the 70s, it stands to reason that you're going to damage the animals that are made of the same, and the plants that are made of the same, and the oceans that are made of the same. You're going to damage everything.